Mia Hall is the picture-perfect daughter and an accomplished cellist. At school, she meets a fellow musician, and the two fall in love. Adam's here. Kids, be careful out there. Here it gets pretty wild at the symphony. But a tragic car accident forces her to choose between life and death in If I Stay. Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm here with Liz and Zoriana to discuss the new film, If I Stay. We've all just seen it. Zoriana, did you stay? Oh my gosh, did I stay? I not only stayed, but I watched it twice. I had to. The first time, I cried like, like a baby from beginning to end. I just bawled my eyes out. So I had to see it a second time, just so I could have some perspective and just see it a little more professionally as a, as a journalist. And I gotta tell you, the second time, it still held up. I didn't cry, but I was definitely still moved. It really tugged at the 17 year old in me, it, you know, I was like willfully manipulated, <laughs> totally went there. I also cried, and but I'm like such a mark for these kind of movies. Like I'll just start crying when they just turn the camera on. I'll just be <laughs> sobbing. An issue with this film is that I couldn't see why she was having trouble making a decision, whether to stay in this world or to go to another world or whatever the afterlife is. Because for me, it seems like she is infinite reasons to stay alive and I didn't see why she'd want to be pulled away from the family that she never fit in with to begin with. Well, that's a good point because I always just took it as though, you know, your whole family's dead, so yeah. what's the point anymore? But, but but even though she felt that she didn't fit in, it was still her family. She still loved her parents. It yeah. made total yeah. sense. I mean, it's not like it, there's a process to her losing them throughout the film. And so which e with every incident that happens, it sort of cements her reasoning to want to go to that white light. But she also realizes that she has a family that she can cobble together with everyone that's still around. The problem for me was that her family was so supportive and so cool, yet she was so timid and so like awkward Deer and confused. And yeah, and I was like, you would never become this person from the parents you had, and including her brother. Her brother was just like the parents. I mean, you can be different, but she was remarkably different. Like she had been abused, and we just missed that part. No, I didn't think that. Oh yeah, at she was all. just like timid and walking around like this. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with her? <laughs> she has the coolest parents in the she world. Has a Child, every family has a black sheep. Like it's, it's. I didn't think it was that market of a difference at all. Really? But yeah. she was also like a beautiful, beautiful girl mm -hmm. who's always like overly coiffed and had perfect hair. Her hair was perfect. But yeah. she had to play this character that was like this awkward girl who couldn't talk to boys, who didn't really know how to navigate through this world. And I, I felt that was very false because I was like, boy, you're Chloe Grace Moretz and you look perfect all the time. But I think as a performer, even though she was styled that way and directed that way, as a performer she did great with the role. See, like, that's yeah. the a thing. solid performance. They all do really great, but the script is so bad. It's so bad. The dialogue is trite. It's cliche. Everything that came out of their mouths. You can't hide the, in that rehearsal room. Oh right? my god, I wanted to die. <laughs> and, and it came so quick. It came so way like that needed to come a half an hour later. Hey, you got some tickets to see a cellist? Really? Yeah. You interested? You're asking me on a date? Yeah, well, a friend of the family had the tickets and can't go. Anyhow, it's this Friday. I could pick you up. What? You can't hide in that rehearsal room forever. It's too late. It's a young adult novel. It's mm -hmm. yeah. made to be ideal. I mean, you want to nitpick that? Mm -hmm. You can nitpick the fact that this guy is a rock star, yet he doesn't drink, he doesn't fool around, he and he only, well, drink mm. to get drunk. Yeah. And he, and he only has eyes for her, which would never happen never in the real world. Mm -hmm. But they've created this ideal boyfriend that not only she loves, but her parents yeah. adore if as well. If you buy into that, if you buy into this idealized world, this is a story that you can you can. Everything exactly was so idealized. It's like into. The Fault in Our Stars had similar aspects where it was a little bit, Dunk. but but it worked. <laughs> but that one worked, and that's Why? the difference. Wait, with this did one just, didn't work. Did you just say don't compare? Yeah. Why? She because I Fault love Fault in Our Stars okay. so much. I love Fault in Our Stars this movie, but and I actually like this one. Behind. I like this one better. Really? Yes, I like this one and much the ends, better. And the end, they totally botched the end. I'm not giving anything away, but what do you mean, that horror it? movie editing at the very end. I'm like, what are you doing? And then the end, final decision is made, and I was, and I was like, that's it. It was a scary ending, and I'm like, I don't understand why you're making it a scary ending. I don't think it was scary 
at with all. The screeching music and the hard, fast Things cuts. Things are coming to a culmination. No. That actually worked exactly. for me. But there could be a beautiful way to do that to justify any sort of decision she made. It is a sentimental movie. I mean, it's yes. overly sentimental, but it's for that age group. I mean, I was with a gaggle of tweens at the screening all of whom were bawling and who want to go see the movie again. I just think when you look deeper, I didn't feel for the characters the same way I would have wanted to, and I didn't feel for the storyline and the conflict the same way I would have hoped. If I Stay is a movie strictly for 13-year-old girls. If you stay to see if Mia lives or dies, you realize you ultimately don't really care. Skip it. I still loved it even after the second viewing. See it. If I Stay is a glossy little film where punk rock is treated as peppy and happy and apolitical, but sometimes you need a little sap in your life. So I say, stream it. Well, our vote's out up to one and a half tickets, which is a stream it for If I Stay. You both can suck it. Now we can go. Cheers. Now we can go. Finish it with that. Whoa.